Well, just about everyone knows someone who has been a victim of domestic violence. We here at WSAV are no exception. Our own Tyler Nicole knows all too well about how it can impact a family. She joins us now to share why this subject is so close to her heart. Thanks, Edward. Six years ago, my life changed. Everything about my life changed because of domestic violence. My mom's only sister, Sarah Smith, was taken from us by the hands of someone we all thought loved her. Today, I'm sharing that story. You're gonna hear from my cousin, my grandmother, and my mother in part one of Sarah's story. When you see Sarah, you see love. Sarah Marie Smith was born on September 1, 1969 in Wimbert, South Carolina to Willie Mae Razor and Thomas Smith. She's a third born of six children, and like her mom said, to know Sarah was to know love. When they say uh, people are loved by everyone, she was one of those people that was truly loved by everyone. Everyone in the church loved her. Everyone at her job loved her. Uh, we all loved her. All of her in-laws loved her. All of the guys just loved her. They always thought she was a, a, a guy's gal because she loved to play, uh, play sports. She loved cards. She liked talking trash with the boys. So, you know, she was just a wonderful, wonderful person. Sarah had one daughter and she was married to a man she knew from childhood. She loved her career as a nurse manager at the VA and she was truly thriving in aspects of life that were shown to the public. But no one around her really knew what was going on behind closed doors. We met Sarah, she introduced herself as the nurse manager of Two West. Um, I can remember her just seeming to be a genuine, strong person, um, really caring. Um, she really embodied what nursing um, is all about. I've learned so much from Sarah. Um, there really wasn't anyone who did not stand to learn anything from her. She was just a wealth of knowledge. Very experienced. Um, she wore her heart on her shoulders. Um, she taught me so much. I don't think that I would have went into leadership had I not met her. One thing to, you know, tell that to your children while raising them, you know, you know, you, you can accomplish your wildest dreams, but also for her to also talk and walk the talk. You know, I growing up, she was able to put herself through school and still manage to be, you know, a high GPA. She achieved her master's degree and all doing this while still balancing taking care of me and a full time job. And, you know, I'm seeing that as an example as, wow, she can do that. Then I think I could do that too. You know, anyone from the outside looking in would be like, wow, this is an amazing person that deserves everything. They deserve the love and support. And unfortunately, I don't think that she ever got that in the partners that she sought out. And that your accomplishments and your self-worth is something that shouldn't be accountable on someone else to value. On October 26, 2017, Sarah's family received a call and their lives were forever changed. The call we received was from a family member saying that my Aunt Sarah had been killed by her husband. We were all devastated, as you can imagine. I will bring you that part of the story ahead on News 3 at 5. So first, thank you for sharing this story. It is so deeply personal for you, I know that. I know you struggled with whether to do this in such a public way. Why did you finally decide it was important to do this? Well, Edward, um, I was holding back tears even yeah. watching that. Um, honestly, I felt like it was time for me to use my platform for a change. Mm -hmm. um, I know that my aunt would have wanted other women to learn from her mistakes and to hear her story and to share her legacy. So I decided that this was gonna be the month that we honor her and yeah. we also save a life. And we have this platform, but it's not always easy for us to share such personal parts of our no, lives. It's not. So you are brave to do that. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. Can't wait to see the other parts of it. Thank, Thank you. you. 
October is Domestic Violence Month, and WSAV is keeping our promise to bring awareness and solutions for victims in need. While physical abuse may break your bones, there are other types of abuse that are meant to break your spirit. Today, we're going to talk about emotional abuse, the forms it can take, and the damage it can cause. Please take a moment and watch. The term domestic violence often makes people think of physical assault, but that's not always the case. There's other harmful behaviors that many people don't recognize as abuse. I think that emotional abuse is one of those, it's very broad and sometimes is so subtle and so covert that people just don't know. Emotional abuse is a subtle form of manipulation and it comes in many forms. The primary motivation for abusers is to gain and maintain control of the victim. The abuser wants to control the victim, meaning he wants that victim to totally depend and rely on him or her depending on the situation. Doretha Rice from Safe Shelter in Savannah says perpetrators use demeaning behaviors to beat down a victim's self-esteem. Emotional abuse usually be when a victim states that their abuser is belittling them, call, name calling, calling them out of their names, and basically just using that as a form of manipulation. Abusers do this because a person with a weakened spirit is easier to control. Other manipulative behaviors include name-calling, hypercriticism, isolating the victim, and excessive jealousy or possessiveness. The tactic abusers use most often is called gaslighting. This involves telling lies specifically designed to mess with the person's head. Mary Hubbard of Shrink Savannah explains why it's effective. Well, it denies the person's reality and then in turn makes them feel crazy, right? And then they're really confused. Once again, a confused person is easier to control. Victims may begin to slowly develop feelings of shame, hopelessness, and fear. They may be in denial that they're being abused or think they can deal with it. Because the person isn't physically hurting them, they think it's okay and allow it to go on. That's when a victim may begin to experience anxiety or depression, insomnia, isolation, and shame. If this situation continues, the conditions can turn into long-term psychological damage like post-traumatic stress disorder. If a victim is experiencing emotional abuse, it can lead to psychological abuse. This is when you step into the realm of mental health. Our clients, we've noticed that they experience forms of depression, meaning forms of PTSD. The Office on Women's Health says prolonged exposure can have harmful effects on the brain and body. A victim can develop chronic pain or sustain damage to the nervous system. Mentally, they can spiral down into a dark and dangerous place. Advocate Karen Alston knows how bad it can get because she's been there. They become suicidal. They get to the point where they say, this is what I said. I'd rather die than to be alive and live it in hell. Emotional abuse is dangerous, but there are things a victim can do at home to take steps toward recovery. The National Domestic Violence Hotline says eating and sleeping well keeps the brain sharp. Walking or just having some fun has been shown to reduce stress and release dopamine, which can counteract depression. Having a safe exit plan and a support system can help a victim take action when the time is right. And finally, seeking professional help through therapy and support groups. A lot of times we're just seeing these victims come in presenting with PTSD, with major depressive disorder, all different types of anxiety disorders. And then after peeling away a little bit, then we can really see what's been going on with this person. Emotional abuse is never the fault of the victim. Advocates say victims should seek help when they're ready in whatever way they feel comfortable. Remember, any type of abuse is serious and no one deserves to experience it. There is hope and there is there are people that believe you and want to genuinely help you be safe. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month and WSAV is on your side with resources and information designed to guide victims toward help. Today, we're gonna to talk about the cycle of abuse, how to recognize the warning signs and some safe exit strategies. Some of the material may be sensitive to young viewers or to those who have experienced trauma. So we invite you to take a moment to make sure your home is ready to hear this story. It's a difficult topic, but it could mean the difference between life and death for someone who's in trouble. 
Please watch. Hurt people hurt people. That old adage may explain the cycle of abuse, but it doesn't excuse it. According to the National Domestic Violence Hotline, 24 people per minute are victims of abuse by an intimate partner, but many people are unclear of what domestic violence is, nor do they understand the risks. It can possibly get real bad. A victim can definitely be hurt or killed by their abuser. The cycle of abuse can often start with a child who witnesses violence in the home, according to advocate Karen Alston. It can harm their emotional, their psychological, and social development. Doretha Rice is the program director at Safe Shelter. She says when those children grow up, they may not be able to recognize red flags. They don't see it as an abuse because they think it's normal. They think it's normal behavior because a lot of times they've seen that behavior before in their parents. She told me abuse starts off small and then grows. If a woman is pushed, if a woman is constantly being yelled at and it doesn't stop, then she's entering into the cycle of abuse. That's the tension stage and then the physical stage will occur. Once the abuse sets in, many women don't want their family, friends, co-workers, or church members to know what's going on. Victims often remain silent. They're isolated from their family and friends, and that's one form of power and control. That's when the abuser has power and control over the victim. Loved ones may know what's going on, but often they just don't know what to do. And we don't want our loved person, our loved ones, to go through it. So we're just like, why don't you just leave? Shannon Bates with Safe Shelter says rather than offering advice, the best thing to do is listen and be ready to act when needed. They can be there as a resource to say, I understand what you're going through. You may or may not be ready to leave, but I'm here to listen and, I, and I'm here to help when you need me. Many people simply don't understand why women stay in toxic relationships. It can be for a number of reasons. It can be for the children. It can be for love. It can be for financial reasons. It really just depends on the victim. It takes a victim up to seven times to finally decide to leave her abuser. When that time does come, it's important to have a safe exit strategy. So we have checklists of things you can put in an emergency bag, of documentation you might want to gather together. Um, and I, so I think I would just be developing that plan. What are your resources going to look like? Are you going to have transportation? What will your kids need? Do you have your medications? Those sorts of things. She needs to also have a second cell phone for safety as well. If things become dangerous, the police are there to help. Chief Jeff Hadley of the Chatham County Police Department says officers are trained to spot signs of violence. They even have a lethality screening to determine how likely a victim is to be killed by her abuser. Is there any damage in the house? Does it look like there was a scuffle, uh, fist through a wall, fist through a door, things, things you know, knocked over, things of that nature? Um, you're going to look for um, how the uh, alleged victim you know, behaves. Um, are they sheepish? Will they not answer your questions? If you or someone you know is in danger, make a call. There are resources. Help is available. When you're ready, Stop the cycle of abuse before it affects the next generation. You are not alone. And there is a community that cares about you, that want you to be safe, and also your children, if you have children. That all you have to do is pick up the phone and call. It's true, we've all heard the term control freak, and usually it's kind of used in jest, but this morning we're going to take a look at how it applies to domestic violence. It's a critical part of the pattern of abuse, and one that's the least talked about. Well, today we're going to do just that. Please take a moment and watch. The United States Justice Department defines domestic violence as a pattern of abusive behavior that's used to gain or maintain power and control over another. Abuse happens to people of all races, ages, genders, and religions, regardless of socioeconomic or educational backgrounds. Chief Adley of the Chatham County Police Department also points out it's not limited to intimate partners. And domestic violence can also uh, be, you know, an elderly mother and a young son. It could be uh, sibling to sibling. It can be anybody that lives or has lived in the same domicile. 
To better illustrate how violence works, the United Nations created this power and control wheel, showing a pattern of behaviors that aren't always identified as abuse, but firmly establish a pattern of intimidation and control. We're going to walk through some of those right now. Advocate Karen Alston says when it comes to child or elder abuse, neglect is a cruel behavior that can harm the most vulnerable and helpless among us. Withholding food, medicine, or health care can endanger a person's life. She encourages friends and neighbors to check on senior citizens and believe what they tell you. And when they say that something is not right, don't always think it's dementia or something's going on in their mind. If they're saying that somebody is beating them, not changing them, not feeding them, red flag. Another subtle form of control is financial abuse. This is when the perpetrator hypermanages household money to the point of limiting the victim's freedom. This is used to keep them from having outside relationships, um, even something as simple as a friend asking them for coffee, they know they can't do that without asking permission and asking for money. Um, it's a source of embarrassment and so oftentimes they, they turn down those invitations and so it starts to isolate the ab abused um, person in that relationship. David Purvis of the Manali firm says isolation is another layer of control, restricting a victim's opportunity for employment and circles of support. But they are um, not involved with family, church, uh, friends in the community even uh, ex extended family relationships uh, suffer and they become very isolated. And typically if there's financial abuse, there's additional abuse going on. There's gaslighting, there's emotional abuse, there may be physical abuse, but the, just because there's not physical abuse doesn't mean there aren't other forms of abuse going on inside that home. Other ways to intimidate a victim is to threaten their parental rights, employment, or immigration status. Perpetrators will often minimize their behavior or blame shift as a way to gaslight the victim into a perpetual state of denial. That allows the abuse to continue. Well, victims need to know when they're ready, there are resources and services standing by to help you take back control of your life. So I would encourage anyone to uh, get connected with Safe Shelter, get connected with the services that are there for them because they're going to be extremely helpful in that process. And we do have some of those resources here for you or someone that you may care about if they're in a dangerous situation. If it's an emergency, call 911, full stop. For a safe uh, escape plan, you can contact Safe Shelter in Savannah, Safe Haven in Statesboro or Walterboro, and Hopeful Horizons, which serves counties across the low country. The National Domestic Violence Hotline is 800-799-7233. And remember, Abuse is never the fault of the victim and help is available. Resources are always on our website, wsav.com slash domestic violence.